Hello and welcome to 5 minutes tutorial on RF Pro. In this tutorial, we will talk about component value tuning and vendor models in RF Pro. Before we start, remember 1, 2, 3, subscribe to the channel, enable notification, like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. All right, so let's spend next few minutes for this interesting topic, which will be very useful for your design work. To illustrate this uh, you know, capability, I have a very simple low pass filter so that you can understand it rather easily. However, the technique I'm going to show you in this video can also be employed in complex area boards such as this. And we have already spoken about this board in last few videos. Now, when you have a circuit like this, which you want to analyze, of course, you know by now how to create an EM analysis and how to add these components individually. If you are not sure about this, please watch the last video, that is video number 10. Now, once you have these components, each component can have the value assignment. And if you want to get a holistic view of all the components and their associated value, instead of going to and double clicking on each one of them, right click on component, look at the properties in, in this table. You can see the component name and the value which we have associated. Now you might be intrigued about these variable assignment and how can we do this variable and then how can we tune these variables? Well, here is the way. So to create any variables, you can double click on any component. You can create variables on the fly. For example, instead of value, you can type in the variable name and now RF Pro looks for the value assignment to this newly created variable. So in this case, for example, I'm going to create 24 picofarad. And once you are done, simply click on plus icon and say done. Now the variable which you just now created is now stored in RF Pro. And this way you can keep on doing it for all, all the components you have. Now where to see the variable value by clicking on the parameters tab here. You can see all the variables which you have created in the past or what is existing in the particular RF Pro session. So that's one way of creating variable. The another way you can directly open the parameter page here and you can click on plus icon and then you can pre-populate the variable as you need. Now, once you have all the variables created which you want, just hit apply. And then now this variable, you can double click on the component where you want to assign the value type in the variable name and it will show the value which you have defined under the parameter page and you simply accept it by pressing this plus icon. As simple as that. Now, all these models have the value uh, which is coming from the variables. And once you have that, you can perform simulation. And once you have the result, you can see is a kind of low pass filter response because it's a pure passive network which you are simulating. So you do not really need to generate in a schematic. RF Pro is sufficient to show you EM circuit co-simulation result directly, as you can see. Now this technique cannot be directly used for active circuits because you will have BJT of FETs which needs a DC bias, etc. But if you're a purely passive network which you are where you are using RLC along with transmission line, this is good enough. Now, once you have these two windows side by side, you can now go ahead and change the variable uh, value to any any particular, you know, any other value. When you hit apply, you can see immediately the response is changing. So this way you can manipulate the value and you can go ahead and specify whatever you want and fine tune your circuit. Now, once you are done, you can of course go ahead and create a test bench. And when you do the test bench, you can you know, see all the variables and now you can do more sophisticated optimization or tuning as you might require. Pretty cool capability, right? All right, so now finally, uh, what if you want to use a vendor model instead of you, you know, using an idealistic kind of lumped model? So the vendor model can be added to any component by going to add model database, which opens a library browser. Now in this library browser, you have components from companies like Murata, Samsung, TDK, and each field here is searchable, and you can just simply filter the value which you are looking at, or type in the filter, I mean, capacitor, inductor, etc. Once you have the right you know, series in front of you, you can click with whichever you want to pick you for your circuit. And here you can see the frequency response along with that, you can also see the parasitic 
parameter values. And once you finalize the component you want to use, simply click OK. This gets added to the list. Now this way you can keep on adding as many views for this component as you want. Whatever you want to make it active, select it and click on set default. You can see it becomes bold and now this component is active. So this way you can keep on doing it for all the components. So here I already have one setup where I have used all the Murata components. You can see all the components is of model DB type and then these are the part numbers. Now you can perform two version of your analysis and you can compare the results by selecting both of those analysis. Right click and show as parameter result and now you can clearly see the difference between two circuits. Although right now difference is too much because the component values are not same, but I hope you get the point. Now once you have the Murata component where uh, Murata component based design where you have finalized everything, if you want to generate a test bench, before you, you can generate the test bench, make sure in your workspace you have the associated Murata library you know, added. If you don't have this library, then you cannot generate a proper schematic. Once you have the library generated, a library attached to your workspace, now you can very simply create the test bench. And here you can see all the components are of the Murata part number. And then you have this parameter which is containing the EM result simply because I already added the Monata component library in my workspace. At this point, you can either perform a regular simulation or now prepare your circuit to do further optimization of Murata components. If you're not sure how to optimize using Murata kind of vendor library components, there's another video on my YouTube channel. So now I hope you got the point and you saw how exciting is this capability, which is offered by RF Pro to be for you to be successful and be more productive. So that's all for this video. I hope you like the content presented and you would be able to use this for your design work. Stay tuned for more upcoming exciting videos on RF Pro. Best of luck in your design work.